Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizito. On Spectrum tonight, marking the International Labor Day, how can the plight of the workers be conclusively addressed? The struggle for better working conditions and recognition by workers in Uganda remains a top agenda, uh, a top item on the national development agenda. As unions and workers' associations continue to push government on a number of issues. Today, as the political class and other stakeholders convened in Gulu for speeches, unionists from Koftu, uh, led by workers MP Sam Diomoki, decided to demonstrate. In a statement read out in Gulu, labor un unions said workers are getting frustrated about government's silence on their demands that they have made over time. Commenting on these demands, especially a better pay and um, intensified job creation, President Museveni insisted that the situation can only improve with more investment and not through strikes and riots. He added that Uganda has competing priorities that need to be funded first, advising workers to be patient. Statistics from the Labor Office indicate that each year, 390,000 job seekers are churned out to struggle for the only available 8,000 jobs on the formal market, making unemployment a serious development as well as social challenge. So as we commemorate the International Labor Day, we ask what are those key challenges within the labor sector and how do they affect productivity and development? Also, is government serious in dealing with the challenges, looking at how it has responded to the demands made by the workers? Our guests tonight, Honorable Martin Wandera, former workers' representative, also executive director of the Center for Labor Research and Studies. You're most welcome, Honorable Wandera. Uh, thank you very much and good evening, listeners. We're joined by Mr. Christopher Kahirita, Chairman and General of COFTU, that's the Central Organization of Tra Free Trade Unions, also an outgoing board member at the NSSF. You're most welcome, Mr. Kahirita. Thank you, and good evening, listeners. We're also joined by Dr. Margaret Mungerera, Chairperson of the Uganda Medical Association. You're most welcome, Madam Mungerera. Thank you very much. Um, you're very, uh, good evening, um, listeners. Honorable Wandera, can you talk to us about the state of employment in Uganda today? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, although the president belongs to the school of thought that uh, more investment and growth automatically creates better jobs, uh, analysis of labor market indicators in Uganda suggests the contrary. The phenomena that we have had in Uganda is one where we've, we've had steady and relatively high growth over the last 15 years. But the employment intensity of growth or the elasticity of employment of growth has been low. Put simply, we have had what we call jobless growth. That's why we have high growth figures, but the majority of the people in Uganda remain tied down in low productivity, poorly remunerating jobs. So while I, I agree with, with the president that yes, to promote, to create jobs, we have to encourage uh, investment to encourage growth. We must be alive to the fact that you can have investment growth without necessarily creating jobs, and this is what has been happening. It has we've had jobless growth because employment has not been a goal of government macroeconomic policy. Because over the years, the objective of macroeconomic policy has been price stability. And that if you keep prices low, automatically you will create a friendly investment climate and crowding uh, investment. In the early years of uh, uh, economic reform, the econ of implementation of the economic recovery program, we saw uh, investment coming in. 
but most of that investment was attracted to the parastatals that were being privatized. And when most of them had been sold, if you look at the figures, you see investment has been going down. And the, the, the recent growth in investment has been largely attributed to growth in uh, uh, to, to the discovery of, of oil. We see very little manufacturing uh, uh, sectors, uh, uh, ventures, attracting both local and uh, foreign uh, investment. And uh, this is because of a number of binding constraints within the economy. The president is right when he says that uh, to create jobs, we need more enterprises to grow up. But data shows that over 60 percent of companies that are started in Uganda, enterprises that are started, die before their second birthday. So you will not create jobs if enterprises cannot survive beyond two years. And uh, one of the causes of the poor performance of enterprises in Uganda has been the high cost and unreliable electricity high cost, lack of access to low cost, and uh, uh, long-term credit. The manufacturing sector is borrowing, taking short-term loans for long-term investments. The road infrastructure is poor. It increases the cost of doing uh, business. So to the president and the government, I would like to say that yes, we need investment in order to create jobs, but the government has a lot to do, especially in the area of providing capital. Because all the other factors of production are there, we have skilled labor in this country yes. that remains unemployed. Right. There is land. Ugandans are fairly entrepreneurial, but Credit is the problem because some banks are giving out credit up to about 30 percent. Right now, it's over 30 percent. Yeah, over 30 percent. Yes. And anyone who is involved in business knows you cannot succeed in an industrial project when you are borrowing at over 30 percent. So the government must move in. All right. <coughs> to make sure that we make credit available and this is I've said this here before we need to seriously consider public sector banking because to have banks whose motive is not to make profit but whose motive is to mobilize resources for enterprise development for e e investment all right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Of course, we have uh, banks like the Post Bank, uh, which is not a fully fledged commercial bank, but also have fin Housing Finance Bank, mm -hmm. which is entirely owned by government, almost entirely, 99 point something percent owned by the government. Mr. Kahirita, the government does not publish unemployment figures, but you coming from the NSSF, what figures would you have on unemployment? On uh, unemployment, I would say, for instance, the employed group, is, uh, is very low and what causes that one is that uh, um, job distribution uh, if you look at uh, the sector in employment you find that say, like university leavers you, 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 you find you find so many students have qualified and for two years they are they are they are on the streets looking for employment and uh, and also you find that those who are employed are poorly paid so they cannot remain in the, in the employment here that's why you find that we have got uh, a lot of people flowing out the workers who would have been worked there to look for for greener pastures and that has affected us very much secondly uh, the, it is very low in that we don't have trained uh, workers. We don't have facilities to train our workers. That has brought down the, our employment. Because, say, take for hotels, you find that almost in every hotel, the manager is a Kenyan. 
and reason simply because we don't have where to train these 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 managers and if you complain the manager will tell you look i have my my, my hotel here i cannot employ somebody who doesn't know what to do. Yes. we have a place like ginger where we have a, a training school for hoteliers but it will train to up to about waiters, waiters. About, you, you can't get a manager Clean the so our employment the real the figure is very very low you, you can't compare with any country, I think, in East Africa. How about structurally? Some people say, uh, you know, there's a lot of work, work in the agricultural sector. Uh, I would we say... pick up holes. Yeah, but now, as you were saying, even if you have a lot of work in the agricultural sector, they need the uh, uh, capital. Like now, they have been trying to put use in agriculture, but they would need money. Now, to get that money, you have produced a land title, you have so that one also has affected the agricultural sector. Where, where, the, where the youths would have been uh, employed, how do they access this money without proper uh, security? Yeah. All right, we'll explore that point uh, deeper in more detail later. Madam Ungera. Who do you have the right attitude towards skilled labor? Talk to us from the perspective of the medical uh, practice. Mm. Can I just say that I think one of the biggest problems that is for, for the health sector is that um, a lot is to do with the, the historical perspective in that um, health workers, the people who first brought this western type of of, of care, were actually of health care, were, were missionaries. And I think that attitude has stayed on. Um, and it's not only the government, but I think it's also the general public, in that um, people are, are satisfied with the fact that health workers are poorly paid. And, uh, and uh, they are complaining, if health workers uh, 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 complain. People say, why are, they, why are they making noise? Why should they speak? They should just continue to do their work because they, are they have a calling. Uh, and, and yet all over the world, uh, things calling. have Others, changed. Their word is in heaven. In the yes. Of and yet everywhere calls. in the world, things have changed. And, and I'm not only going to say that the blame is on government, but it's also on the general public. In that uh, whenever we health workers lift up our voices to say, and I think the same thing applies to teachers, and a lot of us who are in civil service, is as if the civil service, the natives, as they used to be known, we, 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 we should just go on and do their work and not complain. So every time you open your mouth to say anything, people say, why don't you leave? You can leave and go elsewhere and work somewhere else. And yet they know that they need us here. Uh, and uh, I, I think the attitude, the mindset, is what we need to, to work on. Uh, and this is where I think we have the biggest problem. Where is that coming from? Is it still the colonial mindset? I think it's a colonial... 50 years on. It's it, is, it is still there. Uh, and you know it's not only in, in others, but it's also in the health workers themselves. That you'll find health workers who are really disadvantaged and they'll keep quiet and continue work to work and, uh, you know, quietly work. Um, and uh, this, I think this mindset, this whole attitude, we have to work on that and change that. And pay the skilled labor a little bit more. Yeah, because, because you know, Uganda has, has some of the high, uh, most highly qualified health workers in the world, actually. Yes. You see people going to South Africa, they will go to South Africa and, and find up, you find a Ugandan <laughs> doctor, the, the nurse is a doctor, the anesthetist is a, doc, is, is a Ugandan, sorry, the nurse is a Ugandan, the anesthetist is Ugand, Ugandan, the surgeon is a Ugandan, the radiologist is a Ugandan, they're very highly qualified people and our schools are still, they're still giving good quality education um, and uh, therefore we do have skilled, we do lack a bit of the skill mix that we want but uh, we do have a lot of skilled labor within the health sector. Now unfortunately because of what is going on now um, a lot of the skilled labor is, is actually leaving the, 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 the workforce. Is that actually happening? Now? This is happening and uh, unfortunately it's the highly skilled that, uh, that is more is living more than so if you look at for example um, if you look at the nurses and you look at which nurses have left are living in large numbers it's not the the enrolled the enrolled nurse but it is the highly qualified registered nurse who's living the nurse with a degree is the one who lives who's living the work the public you know service uh, if you look at the, the 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 doctors it's not so much the doctors yeah, the junior doctors have not even started bothered to even apply to work but the ones who are living now are the highly qualified doctors uh, well, so it's really the highest skilled who are, who are leaving. Well, but some people will say it's not an entirely bad thing. They send their dollars at, at the end of the month, and uh, when we need treatment, we go and find them. That we spent 380 yeah. billion last. The problem year. is, anybody in this country 
is, is, is at risk of get, can get a, a very serious illness that you cannot be even put on the plane. They're not going to take anyone on the plane with oxygen. I can assure you. Dr. Bing was like a diet because they couldn't. Yeah, there are, they are, they are cases where everybody will definitely no, have, have, anything. have to deal with, with us. South Africa, you have to deal with us. Right. And you know with emergencies, the first few minutes are the most important that time. So whatever happens, everybody has to be dealt with in Uganda. So we have to act. Yes. So you know it cost the man, the man at the top, his life. He, he lost his life. He That's couldn't, right. you know, because he had neglected so it's as the valuable as that. health sector. Yeah. Honorable man, uh, Wendela, talk to us about uh, the push buttons. What would you, where would you put your money to trigger employment? The creation of employment. Yes. Uh, two levels. One, to start with, we need to see who creates jobs. It's both the private sector and the public. So we have to adapt macroeconomic policy that facilitates the creation of employment. On the public sector, we must make sure that the purpose of fiscal policy is to create investment that creates public investments for, for employment. The same should also be true for the private sector. Because right now, we would like to create jobs, but the macroeconomic policy stance being pursued, for example, by Bank of Uganda, in my opinion, does not facilitate the creation of employment. Because it is making capital, which is an important factor of production, very expensive. So we need to address that. And also to make sure that employment is made an objective of government policy. That for everything that we do, the creation of employment should be the major, one of the success indicators of the, 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 the project or policy. The other thing that we have to do is to have government intervene in sectors where the private sector is unable to come in and and invest and to this end I would propose that we adapt uh, what we call industrial policy uh, this is a plan for industrialization of the country because we, we are inviting private investors to come but we allow them to go into areas that make money for them but may not necessarily spur growth, sustainable growth for the economy and create uh, uh, employment. Well, but in the short run, you need that, don't you? You need some investments, pay taxes. Yes, but you, 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 you know, but you see, the, the whole thing is that is not sustainable. Because, for example, if you, you just encourage investment, for example, in, uh, uh, in financial securities, <coughs> yes. that is hot money, it will come in and, and go out. Right. And history shows us that all countries that have developed, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, there was a role, an active role of the government. I was talking to the State Minister of Industry and he told me that uh, the Uganda Development Corporation uh, is uh, being revived to make it a vehicle of, industrial of industrialization. Growth. Because most of these industries that you see were started by UDC. By UDC, by government. Which was owned by the government. Yeah, because honestly, Ed, uh, Edmund, why should I invest in an industrial concern in a factory when I can buy Governor Mutebile's bonds and make money without supervising a worker, without doing anything. So we have to make a choice whether you know we allow any sort of investor to come in or investors that come in and, and create jobs. Now the other thing that we, we have to do is, like, like she was saying, Create jobs, I mean opportunities for employment is one thing, but the people must be employed. Yes. So the issue of education and skills and development is yes. very important. Right. And studies show that the most uh, crucial level of education is primary. Because most of the work that people do at uh, their places of, uh, of work, uh, the skills that are required for work that people do are skills that you cannot get in in any school. Or even if you have no degree but you know you are exposed, you get training, 
you, you'll be able to adapt those skills. But if your numeracy and literacy is poor right from primary, you become very, very difficult to train. So as we consider creating jobs, we have to address the question of literacy and numeracy of our people. Because if you have poor primary and secondary education, training you becomes difficult. Now, the other thing that we also have to look at, after you've created jobs, people are employable. The, the question of their welfare. Because I, I, I believe labor is not a commodity, the way the, the president is trying to, to, to suggest. Because a worker has a family to feed. A worker has rent to pay. But a tomato in the market is... It's a tomato, you know, it doesn't care whether it is bought or not. And if it's not bought, there is no... So we, we also have to, to think of inclusive growth. Because growth, that does not help people come out of poverty. Jobs that do not help people come out of poverty defeat the whole intention of job creation. Because what is happening right now is that you have someone moving from the village from an economic activity like agriculture where they were earning 50,000 and come to Kampala to earn 50,000 shillings. That, that is happening. They might as well stay in the village. Yes, they might as well. So right. th those jobs are, are jobs that don't help to include people into the economy and to, to address poverty. And uh, the, one of the ILO declarations at Philadelphia is what was Poverty anywhere is a threat to prosperity everywhere. everywhere. <clears throat> All right, let's go for a break. This is Spectrum Listeners on Radio 1. Tonight, marking the International Labor Day, how can the plight of workers be conclusively addressed? So go for a break. We'll be right back. When Junior lost his appetite, his mother tried all methods to get him to eat. She tried scary stories. Eat, Tommy, eat, or the big black elephant will come and eat all your food. Mm -hmm. She tried magic. Tommy, if you eat your food, I will turn this handkerchief into sweets. Look, bumble, bumble, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Then she discovered Apetol multivitamin syrup with lysine. Mommy, I finished all the food. I am number one. Apetol multivitamin with lysine is helping mothers to turn Milton frustration to a fun moment. Apetol has a great taste and contains lysine, which quickly improves your child's appetite and supports healthy growth. Apetol, help for life. Sebo, I'm looking for David. I've tried his old number, but in vain. Ah, uh, now David left this place a longer time when you go. Anyway, just slope down there, and then you move forward. Continue, you'll find the lake behind the mountain. When you reach in a corner, you'll find a person. When you find that person, please, just continue moving. Walk, 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 walk. Then you'll see a mango tree next to a jackfruit tree. Then you go up, eh? Don't go the other side. Don't, Don't be like David. Register your MTN SIM card today. Bring a valid ID and a passport size photo to any MTN service center or outlet. Your MTN number is your identity. MTN. Everywhere you go. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also helped friends seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special, you've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Except no substitutes. Radio 1, FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight, marking the International Labor Day. How can the plight of workers be conclusively addressed? We are going to listen to uh, some of the things that the President said in his speech in Gulu today to mark the International Labor Day. All right, okay. The value of labor will be enhanced through making labor scarce. Any scarce item 
costs more than an abundant one. If you have got a large number of, of, of unskilled people, if this one does not work, the employer dismisses him and he hires another unskilled person. If this one says, I don't want this pay, then this man says, okay, I dismiss you. Another one immediately takes his place. If the doctor doesn't get a job here, he will go and get it in London because his knowledge is scarce. With more investments, you'll find that you don't have enough skilled labor or, or even some skilled labor. That's why you find that people can go from here to work in Japan. There are jobs there, but they don't have enough people to do them. When everybody can easily find a job or an alternative economic activity, that will be the day labor will become expensive. Labor in Uganda needs to be very careful not to overprice ourselves and end up making our products very expensive and unviable or uncompetitive in the global markets. Dr. Mungera, what's your response to those statements? <laughs> We have too many dogs, well, maybe that's what we Well, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to understand because I, I think um, to say, I, I want to just say this. You know, this whole um, thing is that we are in the East Africa. We are now in, the, in, the, in one, as one community. Yes. And um, we have been comparing um, the cost. If you want to say the cost of, of, of health, or, or that is, is on, of human resource, the cost, the, 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 the allocation of funding from, by governments in the East African region. Region. And I'm talking about Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania. I'm also now beginning to talk about South Sudan. But I, I, maybe we'll leave South Sudan for the time being. And we talk about all the countries as they are. The, the worst paid health worker is in Uganda. Equivalent. If you get a, an equivalent senior surgeon here and you compare with that, the amount of money that Kenya is spending on a senior surgeon there in, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in Burundi, definitely they're spending more money on that commodity, if at all you're going to call it a commodity. So to say that, uh, that, uh, that we are spending anything at all, we are spending, we are spending, I think we are spending a third of what, of what I think government, Uganda government is spending a third on, on, on this, uh, at least in the health sector, on, on, on what it should be spending on human resource. So I think, uh, I think uh, that's not true. I think it's keeping us, and that sort of logic is, is, it keeps us, well, it doesn't have anything, just shoots you in the foot. Because what do you mean? What I mean, it does, that's that's that logic of saying that, you know, let's keep the costs down, that's called the amount of money we spend on, on, on human resource. Let's keep it down. It's uh, shooting in the foot, actually. Because what it does is you keep it down, but somehow it gets out and you end up going, you, you know, it ends up leaving you, the human resource, you lose it. Well, when but you lose it, saying it's not a big problem if you leave. But you know when you lose it, when you lose it, the number of people who die in this country, the number of people who are ill in this country, the number of people who are spending out-of-pocket expenses on health, you know, if you were to go around and ask the public, there are a lot of the money that they get from wherever they're getting it from, they are actually, half of it goes on, on, on health care. Half of it goes on health care. So you think the government is insensitive? So, so it's, it's, it's shooting itself in the foot when it says, let's keep the costs, let's keep the amount of money you spend on labor down. Because all it's doing is it's making it, you're spending less here, it's, it, it, you're spending less here, and your output is less in, in, as a result. Because if you I, I don't know, for me, the way I see it is if government thought that, it, it, if government could operate like a corporate, you know, the corporates have got it right. Because for them, they're saying, I spend more money on my health, on my human resource to be able to get an output yes and if I spend less on my human resource then the output is less now what's happening with government is government is saying let's spend as little as we can on this commodity uh, uh, uh. and as a result it has less output you have less output the less the less the smaller you spend on the input the, lo the less input the less output you get. So I think what he's saying is really he's shooting himself in the foot in the, in, in the process because he's getting less output from the labor, the skilled labor. So the attitude is absolutely wrong. It's upside down. It's a, the reason upside, upside I don't, down. I don't understand mm -hmm. it. The other thing, Edmund, why should it be always workers to price themselves low? Even in enterprises that are making profits, we have been engaging you on another platform over the profits that the banks have been making. There is a bank, from the information I got from you, that made uh, whose profits grew by 173%. Percent, yes. But the wages of the workers are not going to change. Yes. Don't you think such workers have a case to say that 
we made something together we should, we should, share. Share, we should share with the with the shareholders all right well i'd like you to talk to us about some of the development models in other countries later yeah, and yes. uh, the minimum wage but first of all mr presidency. yeah comment on the president's speech but i would like you to talk to us about the structure of unemployment but first of all the presence first uh, of all uh, if you say that uh, say uh, i take example when we took out a, a, a new a new md uh, we Richard were, Biaruga, we, came from the private yes, sector. Yes, we were paying 18 million to the previous MD. Yes. But this fellow came with his salary, which was uh, about 40, 36 million. Double. Uh, yeah, and, and we talked about it for quite a long time. As we a say, board. Why? As a board. Mm -hmm. We say, let's take him with his salary. Because we want to keep him and we want him to concentrate on work. And he has done a tremendous job. That's why you find that there isn't much to say about NSSF. We have employed new M MD, new uh, finance manager, new company secretary, all those, and we have paid them handsomely. So what the president is saying is really not true. Yes, because if you don't see handle these people well, if you don't pay them well, then really you are, you are lowering their input and your output will be reduced. So people work better when they are paid yes, more? Yes, they, they work better when they are paid more. We've seen it in Parliament, haven't we? Talk to us about uh, the structure of unemployment. The International Labour Organization says Uganda's labour unemployment rate is 3%. Mm -hmm. But you see, uh, I wouldn't take uh, that as the, uh, in a Uganda case. For instance, uh, when you look at the employment in Uganda, unemployment is not the problem. Unemployment are the structures we put there to employ people. Because when you look at, uh, at uh, the structure, the way we employ people, is quite different from other places. And what makes me uh, sometimes lose temper is the people who come from here, the so-called investors, what they pay there is different. Well, how they organize the workers there is different. When they come here, they say, we don't want unionization. We don't want it will reduce our output. Yet, yet the, 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 the company is made up of uh, the so-called investor, the worker, and the capital. The investor brings the capital, but the workers are more important than his capital. With capital, without workers, you cannot, you cannot produce up, uh, adequately. So these fellows look at us as cheap labor people. Uganda, in Uganda, it is cheap. Well, but there's, there's a benefit on that. China has taken over, you know, Japan has also benefited, you know, taking over the, man, the auto manufacturing industry because they have cheap labor. China, especially, pulled 300 million out of poverty because they have cheap labor and yes. built industries. Yeah, but cheap labor here, the, what they call cheap labor is not what is cheap labor here. Here, cheap labor, they, they pay those people very well. What you call cheap labor there is not the cheap labor here. Cheap labor here is a, is terrible. Yeah, you find somebody works from morning to evening, you pay him one thousand. That's what these uh, investors would like to see to pay to our laborers. Yeah. So that is, uh, in fact, that's what brings the, these investors here. Because the ministers go there, they say there is cheap labor in Uganda. So they all and it is cheap. And at the same time, they even bring in their own uh, employees. And they pay them better. And than they pay them better than our people. You go to Munyonyo, you find a, a man opening the door when you are entering. He's an Indian. He does it better yeah. than you may. Now, if it is cheap labor, do you mean <laughs> that here we don't have somebody to open that door? <laughs> Must be an Indian. Yeah, somebody to, to well, but there there is cuts. There are some levels of ex excellence that we might not have, maybe. Like what? Well, uh, you know, hospitality, customer care. But well, customer care, you see, it depends also. That's what I was saying at the beginning. First of all, the the, the training of our employee, employee, employee. Do you mean that fellow is employed? This fellow who is opening a door at the, at the how do you treat to train that fellow to open the door that a Ugandan cannot manage? Honorable talk to us about the minimum wage and would you like to give us some models of uh, the kind of you yeah. know, countries that have developed yes. that? And doing you see, just be, be quickly before I do that, I, I, I have done studies and also read several studies that show that the cost of labor is not one of the determinants of the direction of investment. If that were the case, then there would be more investment coming to Uganda than China because labor in Uganda is cheaper. 
our GDP per capita income per capita is about uh, yes and china does far less than even 10 times uh, what the uh, chinese the, their gdp per capita is now th there is need to protect to, to make sure that uh, people who are engaged in employment have something to gain from their work because the, the, the purpose of employment, the purpose of growth for me is to, to make sure that we fight poverty. And you cannot fight poverty when there is exploitation. So we should have a minimum wage? Yes, I, I believe in a minimum wage. How much should a tea plucker? No, that, that is something that oh, can give be... Us some bracket. No, that is something that can be worked out. You see? I mean, you see... It, 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 the, 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 the law provides for government putting in place a tripartite committee of workers, employers, and government to, to determine what the minimum wage is. But to, 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 the, the whole thing is that the minimum wage protects people from exploitation. Yes. And if you believe that there is exploitation, then you, you cannot believe in not doing something uh, about it. It is also not true that a minimum wage discourages investment. Kenya has a minimum wage. Tanzania has a minimum wage. Tanzania gets more investment than Yes, yeah. Tanzania is getting more investment than, than uh, Uganda. Brazil, which is one of the fastest economies. Fastest growing. Yeah. It's over to yeah, the it's UK. Over to the UK. Yes. Now number six. Yes, they have a minimum wage. So there is no correlation between sustained growth and the level of, uh, uh, of wages. So you want to fix the minimum wage investors want? No, actually, the, there is a study that was done in New Jersey, which uh, within the restaurant in the, uh, sector, the, the restaurant industry, when a minimum wage was fixed, uh, companies that, restaurants that adapted the minimum wage, did better than those that had not. Because people work yeah, people are better motivated. People are motivated. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, this is Spectrum Listeners on Radio 1. Tonight we're uh, marking the International Labor Day. How can the plight of workers be conclusively addressed? Our guest tonight, Mr. Christopher Kahirita, Chairman General of COF2, that's a central organization of free trade unions, uh, also outgoing board member at the NSSF, Honorable Martin Wandera, former workers' uh, representative, now executive director at the Center for Labor Research and Studies, uh, and Honorable Dr. Margaret Mungera, president of the Uganda Medical Association, not Honorable, she's protesting that vehemently. You can call in now, our number 0414348111. 0312260390 and 0312260390. When you call in, please tell us your name and who are you calling from. The numbers again 0414 348 111 0312260390 0312261390. Mr. Kahirita, should the NSSF be disbanded? give the money to other players, private sector people for instance to manage it? I think disbanded is a strong word. Um, I think NSSF should be maintained as it is and then the, that sector can be liberalized but NSSF should be kept intact. If need be, uh, there should be uh, certain amount a, 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 a worker can keep in NSSF up to a certain level, then if he wants to join another another fund, it is up to up, up, up to that. But, but the government should be control over the fund in the NSSF. You think NSSF is a good thing? It is not only a good, it is very good. The, the time I have been here. Uh, first of all, it needs better management. Secondly, it needs employers and employees to take care of that money. This question of picking people who are friendly to minister people, what just put them there as a reward they put in NSSF because you failed to go to parliament because that one shouldn't come. 
I think workers, employers, and then somebody to take care of the government but should be not on that NSSF. Otherwise, NSSF is one of the best places where workers can save their money. Is it being managed well now? It is going to, first of all, we have finished our term, our service. As, and as and the people don't know that we have finished our term because yeah. we haven't made news for the press, for you people. Right. We haven't done any mistakes. We okay. haven't. Let's, there was no let's hear from one of our listeners. Spectrum, hello. Uh, apologies for that, we've lost you. You can still call in our number 0414-348-111. Spectrum, hello. Well, there seems to be an issue there. Well, hey, so what I was saying is that uh, if we were managed, workers' money will be assured. It will be safe. It will be safe. Because if you met these ad hoc companies... Okay, Spectrum, hello. Good evening, my friend. Your name? Yes. Yours. Oh, we have another caller. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Okay, Spectrum, hello? 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 Good evening, my friend. Your name? Patrick Karoma. Yes, Patrick. Hello. Hello, Edmund. How are you? Very well, thanks. Your name? I'm called Ahmed. Too. Yes, Ahmed.
Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Kahirita. I wanted to say something about accessibility of the NSSF money. I think the bill is already in the parliament about the amendment of the, of the Act, and we have proposed that people can access this money at 45. That's the recommendation we have put there. And that if you have saved with the fund for about 10, 20 years and you have got certain amount of money, you can take 30 percent. You can borrow that 30 percent from there. Because you find somebody has got a, a child at university and he has got 40 million in NSS. But because he's not 55, his child is sent away. Yeah? Or loses because, because... So we are trying to say that these people should access this money if you have served for so, so long and you have got such an amount of money, take thirty percent of that money. That's that is already in the, in the parliament. <coughs> Dr. Ungara. Oh, what can I say? Um I, I think um Medicine itself, and as I said, it takes a whole day uh, to talk about these issues. I think medicine itself is an apprenticeship. And I think it's important to realize that medicine is not about giving lectures. And therefore, senior health workers in the public service should be respected. Because what they're doing is, uh, is, 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 is they need to be there. So it's no good saying they can leave. They need to be there because medicine is an apprenticeship. And therefore, mentoring, on-job mentoring, on-job mentoring is very, very important. Um, the, the whole issue of peer influence is very, very important. When it comes to ethical behavior, professional behavior, it's very, very important. And uh, when he says that uh, pay, I'll just say that uh, with everything I get, I, I'm, I'm the most senior paid health worker as a senior medical consultant. And my appointment letter is signed. Is actually, it's the president who has appointed me. His Excellency, the president, appoints the senior cons medical consultants. And therefore, I'm at the top of the health sector, in the public sector. Yes. And uh, when I put all my allowances, my consolidated health allowance, my lunch allowance, my my, my salary, basic salary, uh, and the teaching allowance I get from the ministry, you don't make I, I make 1.9 million shillings. That's my take-home pay. As so the senior best paid most, doctor. As the best paid doctor in the public sector. 1 million shillings. 1.9 million shillings. So I don't even get 2 million. And uh, I, I'll just say that, you know, th uh, this is very pathetic. I mean, you, you, when you compare us with the, those of the other people in the region. But I also want to say something else. Somebody talked about creation of jobs, and 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 I, I, again I'll go back to the fact that even when the when the help, the professionals, professional people try to provide services or to create jobs, there's no facilitation. You know, there are health workers, who, for example, I'll talk about health workers, but teachers are doing the same. They go out there and they, they, they set up schools, private schools, they set up private hospitals, private clinics to try and, crea try and create, job, to create jobs for young people, right. young professionals. Okay. But there's no facilitation. You know, if you try and get a loan, it's the same, the same in the bank, it's the yeah. same interest. Okay. Right? The, the interest rates are the same. There's no facilitation from government to say that, okay, you've now created jobs, so for you we'll give you some incentive. Okay. Okay. There's nothing out there right. for creation of jobs. Honorable Martin Wandera, one and a half minutes. Yeah, <clears throat> for me, I still think that we can still pay our workers, both in the private and public <coughs> sector, well, given the circumstances, because well is, is relative. I believe, for example, that our government can afford to pay our doctors five million. Every month, yes. Because there is money, if you look at the Ultra General's report, there is a lot of money that goes to waste. There is a lot of expenditure that goes to non-priority areas. So it is just a matter of knocking out those non-crucial or priority budget lines and will mobilize resources to pay our doctors. Yes, doctors can go to South Africa, they can go to Germany, but the cost of a doctor going to work in London is higher than the, the cost of paying a doctor well and retaining him. <coughs> All right. So, we need to optimize. Yes. Then, then the other thing which the president is saying that uh, labor must be, a certain skill set must be scarce for it to be well paid. Yes. He also does not, uh, uh, it can't stand rigorous scrutiny okay. because 
we, we know for example the manager of the general manager MD of Umeme yes. earns over 300 million every month is it because there are no people with BCom or bachelor That's only million shillings yes every there are people we with have to PhDs who, who in business who, who, who are ready to manage it for 10 <laughs> we have to go thank you yes. very much yes. can, I can I just say that I, I sadly so the doctors are not going anywhere right what they're doing is they're just they're just changing jobs Change. what they're doing is they're leaving the patients and they're getting into desk jobs the, the so tomorrow. so forget about doctors Doctors leaving. Doctors are going to stay. We will stay in Uganda, else. but we are going to do something different. We have to go. Thank you very much, Daddy. I guess Mr. Christopher Kaheri, the yes, Chairman my, General of Complaints that uh, this spectrum I expected. I expected to talk about Labor Day. Yes. And why we went to City Square and the rest. Now this is a mixed grill. Mm -hmm. I haven't come out because what I had come to say is not what I've been asked to say. Somebody actually I pray, said should have a separate I pray day. That we have a separate day. We have two workers representative here and face you. Right. We have not served our workers All there. Right. They must be complaining. There should be another day. Thank you very much, Mr. Christopher Kahiri, the Chairman General of COF2, also outgoing board member at the NSSF, Honorable Martin Wendera, former workers representative, executive director, Center for Labor Research and Studies, and Dr. Margaret Mungerera. President of the Ghana Medical Association. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chizito Spectrum. We'll be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English.